in a trial for gun possession, can the people bring in the fact the defendant had two previous instances where he had guns and denied knowing it? To find out, you have to read People versus Telfair, but it's 32 pages. Don't have time for that? I've got you covered. This is TLDR, Too Long Didn't Read, where I cover New York Court of Appeals cases, and I try to do it in five minutes or less. This is the episode on the case of People versus Telfair. The citation for this case is 2023, New York Slip Opinion 05965, published by the New York Court of Appeals on November 21st of 2023. The issue in this case, it's a Molyneux case. The question is, are prior instances involving a claimed lack of knowledge of gun possession relevant uh, to a present charge of gun possession? Uh, to understand and appreciate the context of this case, I think the important part, background, uh, that's helpful is the concept of the Molino application itself. Molino, the Molino rule, uh, it's from it's from a case called Molino, is basically a general rule that, in general, evidence of a defendant's prior bad acts or prior uncharged crimes are inadmissible, are not admissible to prove to be to, not admissible in a criminal trial. You generally can't just bring out the fact that the defendant did something prior uh, that was either an uncharged crime or a bad act because the risk is that the jury is going to use that prior bad act and convict the defendant based upon that rather than the fact that he's actually guilty of the crime for which he's charged now. It's called propensity reasoning and it's it's inadmissible. It's, it's unfair. It's an unfairly prejudicial way for a jury to utilize evidence. So that's not allowed, but there are exceptions and it's an, it's a non-exclusive list of exceptions there. So it's, there's actually a list of exceptions that we know by an acronym. We, we say MIMIC, M-I-M-I-C. And what is that? It's motive, intent, mistake or lack of accident, identity and common plan or scheme. And then others, it's, it's not, it's, it's a non-exhaustive list, but if, if the prior bad act or prior uncharged crime is relevant for those purposes, so it's got an other. It's got an other. It's got a non-propensity reasoning uh, that why it's relevant. Then it could be admissible. It's a two-part test. It's the two parts are called. It's basically relevance and worth. What's the non-propensity relevance of it? And then once you identify the non-propensity relevance, you have to weigh. The judge has to weigh and balance the relevancy of the evidence versus the danger of unfair prejudice for the danger that the jury might use it as an as a, in, for the propensity reasoning, which is not allowed. Okay. So that's the background that's helpful to understand this case. What are the facts here? So the facts are, this is a famous, this is a famous defendant named Sebastian Telfair. He's a famous former basketball player with the NBA and the Chinese league as well. Uh, he played for the Trailblazers, the Celtics, the, the Timberwolves and the Suns. Um, in the past, he had some previous incidents involving guns. So in 2006, while he's a while he was a professional basketball player, he got on a team flight to Boston, and a flight attendant found a 22 caliber gun in a pillow of his. And he, when the police talked to him about it, he said, "Well, uh, someone else packed my bag. My girlfriend packed my bag. It wasn't my gun. I didn't know it was there. My girlfriend packed my bag. They didn't charge him." In 2007, the defendant was stopped for speeding in Westchester County, New York, and they found a loaded 45. Uh, under his passenger seat. And when the police asked him about that, he said, well, it, once again, he said, it's my girlfriend primarily uses this car. I didn't know it was there. She must've put it there. So, but once again, I didn't put it there. Someone else put it there. I didn't know about it. That time he was charged. He pled guilty to criminal possession of a weapon in the fourth degree. But this charge crime is that uh, in, in the early morning of June, 2017, while it's still dark out, the defendant was driving his car without his headlights on and did an illegal U-turn. So the police pulled him over and they approach his car, they smell marijuana, and they observe a lit marijuana cigarette in the center console. So they take him out, they arrest him, they ultimately find uh, a loaded 45, uh, 45 caliber gun in the center console and three handguns and ammunition in the back. Uh, each gun was legally purchased in Florida and, the, and registered to the defendant. The defendant was charged with these crimes. And at the trial for this new 2017 incident, the people move for a Molino ruling. They say, I want to bring in the fact that he had this 2006 incident and this 2007 incident. Why? What's the non, what's the non propensity reasoning that they give as why it's relevant? They say the defendant is likely to claim it was an accident or that he didn't know or someone else packed it. And this would go to rebut that. He can't keep saying that. He's done that twice before. Uh, the defendant opposed that application. He said that has little, if any, probative value with respect to what happened in this 2017, but it's very prejudicial. The judge said it's relevant, and he weighed the, the factors and said it's 
going to be allowed in. So he allows that evidence to go in. The defendant is ultimately convicted. Uh, the, the defense was that he didn't know, you know, he didn't know the gun was there. And when he's convicted of criminal possession of a weapon in the second degree, which is a felony, um, he's acquitted of everything else. He appeals it and the appellate division affirms the conviction, affirms what the judge did, and it goes to the court of appeals. And here we have a four to three ruling of majority and a dissent. The majority, which is by four judges, says that this was an improper Molyneux uh, admission, that there was no non-propensity reasoning, no non-propensity relevance for this 2006-2007 incident because they did not increase the probability or the possibility that the defendant knew that the guns were in his car in 2017. This is just propensity evidence. It's just evidence that he had a gun in 2006, he had a gun in 2007, he probably had a gun in 2017 too. It's the propensity reasoning, which is not allowed. They say it's not harmless error, conviction reversed. There is a dissent here, the three-judge dissent by written by Judge Canatero. He says multiple. there are multiple exceptions here. This is the wrong the, – the majority here is wrong. Remember mimic, motive, intent, uh, motive, intent, um, I. Mistake, identity, common plan, or scheme. This is relevant because it goes to intent and lack of mistake. So there's two relevant purposes here. Uh, and he says we should be giving more more, dis- more discretion, more um, deference to the trial judge's decision here. But once again, the majority holding here is this was improper. And there is no Molyneux here for the prior possession of guns to make it more likely that he possessed guns on the date in question. If you like what you just saw and want to see more just like it, Please hit like or subscribe to let me know.